Well, I think we'll finish up today with finishing, which is as it should be. This is a polissoir. It's a, it's a tool that was used traditionally for preparing and applying finishes, particularly wax finishes. It is not specific to Europe. Uh, this particular style of one is French. Uh, I discovered it while working on the on the Roubaix book, but this is, you know, straight from the broom maker. So the end of it is a little bit rough, and it's not uh, perfectly smooth uh, and planar or even um, conical. So first thing I have to do is is sand it and create sort of a smooth crown to it. Um, And I'm just rotating this and then starting at the edge and then working to the center until I can create a little bit of a crown. And once I get this thing so that it's got a nice smooth crowned profile on the on the top, it's it's ready to ready to use. And uh, let's take a look and see. So you can see that it's really getting much smoother and even in in its uh, configuration. And a, a li just a little bit of a crown, not much. The less you can get by with, the better. So I'm just going to rotate this around once more all the way, and then it'll be ready to go. And uh, if, if you have one of these tools, and I sell these tools, this one is sold only through Lee Nielsen. This one I sell on my website um, and some other uh, versions of this uh, at donsbarn.com. You can... Feel free to contact me about that, um, and I'll be happy to talk with you about them. But uh, I've been a finisher professionally since about 1972 or three, and I'm finding that this tool is really, even at this point, just changing the way I work. Um, it's really quite quite spectacular. And uh, I can set this aside, and, and I'm just going to take the back side of this board, which is just a piece of plywood. I've done nothing to it, and I'm just going to rub it with this um, polisher. And you can see it's going to begin to change the character and the gloss of that surface. Um, I'm not sure if it's showing up in the camera, but I'll move it until, until it can. But it just compresses and polishes the fibers of, of the wood. Uh, so you can, you can probably see some, some change in gloss right at that corner. So anyway, that's just the sort of work that this tool does. And then when you use it in concert with uh, some paste wax, and this is a blend that I've come up with and hope to market s sort of soon. It's a beeswax shellac wax blend. And I'm just going to, you know, work it on the surface. Normally, I would first um, submerge this polisher in molten wax to have it fully saturated, but I didn't just because we just thought about doing this today. So. Um, so this is this is both polishing and finishing the surface, and this would have been the finish that was that was used back in the day a lot. Um, the high, both high style and country style furniture were often finished with with wax. It was the prim primary finish in transparent finishes back in back in the day, and it has the advantage also of filling the grain while you're working. So. Um, so that's pretty, pretty nifty, and we'll just set that aside and then buff it out with a, a pad. These are, I, I use uh, these lint-free lithography pads from the Webroll company. I think they're the only ones still making them, but, uh, you know, back in the day, that would be the finish. It would be done. And uh, you could, if, if we, the longer we wait on this, the higher the, the shine is going to buff. Because uh, I didn't, I didn't really work this into the plan very well. 
but that's just the way finishing a lot of finishing would have been done so I'm still perfecting my formulation of that paste wax but it does uh, it does yield a very pleasing surface both to the to the eye and the hand so but another finish that I wanted to mention was some uh, uh, a lotion polish an archival quality lotion polish that we invented at the Smithsonian that we patented that was patented it wasn't me that patented my colleague Mel Lahoviak and I worked on this and he patented and this is a very very high performance um, maintenance it can either be a maintenance surface you know a furniture polish or it can be a finish all by itself and it again is a blend of shellac wax and beeswax and I'm hoping to go into production on this sometime later this year and I'm just spreading it around you know don't need much of a layer at all just a pretty thin layer and uh, I'll just wipe off a little you don't want you don't want so much of it that you have to wipe it off but I put a little too much on so I'm just gonna wipe some off and you can just wait a couple minutes and then buff it to pretty much a mirror shine uh, as you can you can see I'm hoping you can see some of that gloss in the camera and again after it sits for a little bit but this project a product was invented purposefully for um, archival quality furniture care within a within a collectible or museum uh, museum environment and yet it's still an exceedingly high performance um, product and uh, it was used in the US House and I think on the Senate and other places and certainly at the Smithsonian we used it but it's something that I'll be manufacturing here in the near future for sale and you know if you check back on my website which is donsbarn.com you can get an update on it or I think if you go to Joshua's website woodenshop.com is that right yeah and I'm sure he'll he'll keep up with it but uh, again this is just this is not a surface that's been well prepared it's just something we dreamed up to do here just before we went on camera so um, the surface is really really smooth and slick and you can see you can see the, the sheen of it uh, I, at least I hope you can so but that's that's an, that's the next big chapter in our undertaking here is uh, manufacturing Mel's wax named after uh, my colleague and dear friend Mel Hoviak who died a few years ago and we're carrying on in his name and in his honor to, to bring this to you so with that I think we're going to wind up the tour of my my shop and my space and my my fairly idyllic life out here in the mountains and uh, I hope you get to pursue the same dreams that I've been able to accomplish uh, or at least reach for and uh, hope you have as much fun doing it as I did and uh, thanks for coming for a visit and I look forward to hearing from you and staying in touch. If you're interested in learning traditional woodworking with hand tools, visit my website at woodandshop.com where you can find free video tutorials, buying guides, and reviews. Make sure you subscribe to my regular blog posts and also check out my 10 steps for getting started. Enjoy!